Hey everyone, I've got a rare how-to video for you today. I don't normally do how-to videos. In fact, I don't know if I've ever done a how-to video. But in one of the Facebook uh, reseller groups that I'm a part of, a question came up around how to create um, flat shipping rates for international destinations. Um, this seller was having a hard time um, figuring out uh, how to create different rates for different countries um, so that they wouldn't lose money when shipping internationally. And I was, um, I guess I, I was foolish, but I was surprised that there were quite a few people in that thread actually who did not know how to do this. So I thought I would create a video to explain it. Now you will need to be opted into business policies for this to work as far as I know. Um, I did see that you can also create these types of rate tables within the listing flow, but I have not experimented with that myself. I'm just going to be showing you how to do it through business policies. So assuming that you are set up with business policies already, you want to go into um, that section and find your existing shipping policies. And what we're going to do is create international rate tables where you can create um, a policy that will show different shipping rates to different countries all over the world. So I'm gonna use this um, shipping policy as a test. Find any of your shipping policies and you can just click on the title of it or click edit and that brings you into the policy. So as you already know, if you use business policies, you have your policy name and description here. Now I am a Canadian using .com to list items. So from eBay's perspective, it's treating me as if I'm in the US and as if US shipping is domestic and Canada is international. Um, so if you're a seller selling out of Canada and you want to sell on the .com platform, just remember that those things are flipped. eBay thinks you are in the US and that Canada is an international destination, even though it's not. Um, so I have my US shipping set up there. We're not concerned with that today. We wanna to look at the international shipping section of this shipping policy. So the first thing I've done is I've picked my rate to ship to Canada. I have a flat rate. This is for a really lightweight item. So I'll be using Canada Post Expedited Light. Um, I cannot choose Canada Post from this drop-down list. That's one of the drawbacks of Canadian selling on .com is that we have no option to choose our um, domestic carriers in the drop down list. So I have just chosen expedited international shipping, even though it's not really international. But anyway, I've listed that flat rate for Canada, and then I want to have separate flat rates for other countries other than Canada. Um, so I have set up a few here, and I have kind of this base shipping rate of $15 to a few select continents and countries around the world. Um, you'll note that this one has Russia included, but of course, this is not a policy that I'm actually using. This is a copy of an old policy, so I, I am not shipping to Russia. Um, I will choose will ship worldwide to this, and then I'm going to have two things down below. I'm going to have my international rate table, which I'm about to show you how to create. I'm also going to have my excluded shipping locations down here my exclusion list. Um, so you see here in shipping rate tables, this is what we want to play with. In this drop down menu, you'll see I already have four policies or rate tables listed. These are ones that I've already created and I'm using, and you can apply any rate table that you've created to any shipping policy. If you have never created an international rate table, you will not see anything in this drop down list. What we wanna do is go over here to create rate tables and we're gonna create a new table. So if I click that, it opens up this template or this form and I can give my table a name like example table and I can choose from expedited, standard or economy options. Now. Almost every international location that I ship to, I'm using an economy option. I use Dalian Express as my cross-border shipper. They have a carrier that ships to most international destinations. Um, it's fairly slow, usually takes two to three weeks for things to arrive. I consider that economy, so I just tell the buyer, you're getting an economy service. So here we're going to be able to opt in the different countries that we want to ship to. And we're also going to be able to choose how much we're charging for each of those countries. So if we click add regions or states, it brings up 
um, a whole, it brings up all the countries in the world sorted by continent. So if I want to exclude all of Africa, I'm not going to click anything here. I'm just going to leave it blank. Um, any of, clicking any of these drop down arrows will open up all of the countries within that continent. So within Asia, there's a few countries that are going to be reliable locations to ship to. I'm just going to choose a couple of them here as an example. And I'm also going to ship to places in Europe. Now again, you don't have you can either choose this, which will allow you to ship to all of Europe, or you can choose uh, one country at a time. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to pick Ireland, Poland, Czech Republic, and France. And then I'm also going to, for demonstration purposes, choose every country in Oceania or Oceania, but this is just for demonstration. So let's say I'm done here and I've picked all the countries that I'm willing to ship to. Then I go to the bottom and I click save. And it brings me back to the first page of that template. And now you'll see that all of the um, countries that I have chosen to ship to are listed right here. Oops, let's get out of that. Didn't mean to click it. Cancel. Okay, so now I can choose a shipping service, Economy International Shipping, and I can choose a price. Let's say $15. Now, let's say I know that it's going to cost me $15 to ship to any of those destinations, but I would also like to add some other destinations that cost a little bit more. I'm going to go back into that um, the country choice list, and I'm going to say, yeah, I want to ship to Africa, and I know exactly how much it's going to cost me to ship to Africa. So I'm going to add Africa, and you see that Africa shows up as a separate item in the list. So what you have to do is you have to um, you have to sort this or separate it by like all the countries that it costs fifteen dollars to ship to, all the countries that it costs twenty five dollars to ship to, all the countries that it costs fifty dollars to ship to, etc. And I'll be able to apply a flat rate to this as well for all of Africa. Let's say it's thirty dollars. So this is obviously going to require you to do a fair amount of research ahead of time. Um, you know. EU countries are easy to group together because they tend to cost about the same to ship to, um, but not always. So it's it's definitely worth it to research each one individually. Um, and you can exclude any countries that you don't want to ship to at all. And then as you learn more about what it costs to ship to different in international destinations, you can always go and add these to the list. So let's say I'm done here and I'm gonna save this table. Congrats, you've created your shipping rate table. Now I'm gonna click I'm done. And now it's going to show up in this drop down list. You'll see I have example table here. So you just choose the rate table that you want to apply to um, this shipping policy. Make sure that this little blue checkbox here just above it is checked that says apply international ship shipping rate table and then you're going to edit your exclusion list to make sure that you have any countries excluded that you definitely do not want to ship to and then you're going to click save. Now I'm not a hundred percent sure what happens if you have indicated worldwide shipping as I have here it says will ship worldwide if you've indicated worldwide shipping, but you don't have a rate set for a specific country, either because you haven't researched it yet or you forgot to add it to the list, I think what will happen is it will, um, the buyer will see a, a note in your listing that says to contact the seller to find out what the shipping is. Um, and then hopefully they do. And then you can always adjust and edit your rate tables to reflect um, your learning as you find out what it costs to, dip, to ship to different destinations. But this is really nice because it allows you to apply a different rate for every country in the world if you want to, and you can also exclude certain countries that you don't want to ship to at all. So that's how I do it. It's a little bit cumbersome for sure. Um, you'd have to create a few dummy shipments in whatever uh, shipping service you're using, whether that's Stallion Express, Chit Chats, Canada Post, Pirate Ship, or whatever 
you use um, to sort of figure out what those costs are going to be. But over time, you start to learn generally what things cost. And we're often within a couple dollars on on these um, amounts now. Um, usually we are up a little bit. So I have like $15 is like my probably my cheapest rate to any international destination. And I might end up shipping like some doll clothes or a pin or something extremely light that only comes in at 10 or 11 bucks. Um, I keep that money. It's to me, it's part of the risk of shipping overseas. We also have to consider that we need to add insurance. I always add insurance to overseas shipments, no matter how valuable they are, because we are using, I am using these economy services that I feel are not quite as reliable as couriers um, and other national carriers. So those do add to the risk of shipping internationally a little bit. Um, and for that, I would like to be compensated slightly by um, being up a couple dollars on each of these shipments. Um, so that's how I do it. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. I always miss something. So I'm happy to clarify or explain anything further.